I'm Allie, and this is our 34-foot gooseneck tiny house. I live here with my husband, Kevin, and our three-year-old twins, Bodie and River. So we knew we wanted to travel. Uh, we knew we didn't want to just build a tiny house and stay put, and goosenecks just tow better. So ultimately, we ended up paying the same price, um, probably a little bit more for the trailer, and losing a little bit of space, but it was totally worth it in order to get the gooseneck and the easy tow. We purposefully bought the truck for this build. We went really big too. She's like a Dodge Ram 3500 dually, 410 axle ratio, rated to tow 30,000. Uh, this is our full-time home and we've lived in it for six months now. This is our kitchen. We needed a really functional home with the twins. Um, if it were just Kevin and I, we would have gone a lot smaller, but thinking about kids and growing into this home, since it is our full-time home, we wanted everything to have its place, everything to just feel really organized and have a home. So um, I'm also kind of type A OCD and um, I knew that I'd want like fruit and toaster and like our dishes drying to have one space and then my prep space to be just prep space. So I separated and had like two different counter spaces. So over in this corner is where I can put just all of the kitchen items that stay out. And then this is just always dedicated to prep space. Since it's small, you wanna have like a dedicated prep space. Um, and then I've just always wanted the sink. There's no reason that I got a super fancy sink except I've always wanted it. And we were building our home from scratch, so why not? So we actually custom designed the house, but we hired a builder. So Tiny Heirloom was our builder and they like this is like their standard farmhouse sink that they put in all their houses either this one or a copper one and then we have parked in a ton of different places our most recent place that we were parked was um, on a bison farm and so we were on a really old well where all of the bison drink out of so this berkey has seriously come in handy um we don't we've never had to buy drinking water Supposedly you can even uh, filter pond water. We haven't had to do that yet, but um, we have it just in case we need to. We move like every week to two weeks. We've parked in um, two places for a month, but everywhere else we've just moved like a week to two weeks. We've got it down now where we can like be out of a place within an hour. And we also built to travel. We knew we wanted to travel, so like every we know exactly what we need to do. We use uh, baby locks, which are really helpful. It helps keep the boys out of things you don't want them into, and it helps with travel. But all I have to do, I just make sure the Berkey is full, and I take it off of its stand and put it right here, and it's never fallen. So, I mean, it's pretty heavy, and oh, we've had lots of things come down. I forgot to take the knives down. Thank God we didn't do wood floor, because the floors would have been destroyed. We did luxury vinyl. I found it online. I wanted like something like really funky and wood textured, and this was the only company that I could find that made this like funky wood texture. Our knives did come down one time, and there are no marks at all. So the Berkeys stood up to every drive, which is pretty amazing. And then our builder also said that they've never put more cabinetry into a home than they put into our home. Like I already said, that I'm type A and so when we decided to go tiny it all happened really fast but luckily I was able to do everything I wanted to do I took first we got rid of everything we knew we didn't need and then the things we like thought we might need we pulled all of those out put them all out on our counters and pared down again and then I started I just took plastic bins that we had in the garage and I started setting things in plastic bins and measuring that exact space and then sending that to our builder and saying, I need a drawer this width, this height. I mean, I sent them like 20 emails a day with exactly what we needed, but you can see like our dishes fit perfectly in here. They're in the dishwasher right now, but normally they're like the small plates here that are literally fit right there, small plates here that fit right there. We have like Macy's Fiesta wear that's never broken. We had a drunk friend break one, but when we're driving, we've never had an issue. We put in these super heavy duty locks. So I don't even have to strap these when we travel. I just push in and we're golden. It makes life really easy. And so the only things I have to strap down in the kitchen, we even have straps, like I have all of the boys' art supplies and like any office stuff we might need up in these bins up here. Those just always have a strap. They just live with a strap. The boys' backpacks just live with a strap. So we really don't have to do anything to the kitchen except make sure that all of the cabinets are pushed in. And then these heavy cabinets, I put an extra lock on. I put a baby lock on these and a baby lock on these too. But like we fit it so much stuff just because I did that pre-measuring. I've got, since we're cooking for a family of four, I've got my full-size Instant Pot. I've got a full-size Ninja. I have a small food processor because I just like to make pestos and stuff and a hand mixer to make ho uh, homemade cookies. And it all fits perfectly in this drawer. And then all of our pots and pans in the base for the blender. So we really don't feel like we're missing out on anything, even in like 
a substantially smaller space. If the three feet of prep space isn't enough, I can always pull up our dining room tables. And this hardware is amazing. We found this on Amazon for like 30 bucks. It's so sturdy. I don't love furniture that I have to like maneuver to turn into 10 things. With the boys, it's just too hard. When they want something, they want it now, and I'd rather just give it to them now than deal with the breakdown. So um, this table is the only thing that I actually have to do anything to, and I don't mind it at all, um, just because it's so simple. Pull it up, they can do it now on their own. Pull the stools out and then wipe it down when they're done eating. Push these two little clips and it pushes right back down. And we have two of them. So we can do like full bar seating if we want to or we can just huddle around one table if we're just having you know, breakfast, lunch. So it's really nice. Kevin will usually get work done on this table as well. So it doubles as an office. We're RVIA certified. So we had to go with all RV appliances. So we have a Furion cooktop and oven. I love to bake cookies. I love to make homemade meals. So this is actually like really come in handy. It all runs on propane. So when we're boondocking, I can still cook no problem. And I've made like full size lasagnas and homemade cookies in here and absolutely love this. I'm really glad we went with the three burner rather than the four. The four burner is the same size. It's like a 20 inch and you just can't even fit like four pots on the floor, so I would have only really had two to use. The three burner I can put a big griddle on, and then I can get like a big breakfast made really quick, which is amazing. So I really like the three burners all in a row. And then the dishwasher I don't love as much. We're probably going to end up replacing this with something else. So it just doesn't get dishes as clean. It does, the, the bonus of it though, is that it only uses two and a half gallons of water. So we have 35 gallon fresh and gray water tanks. We end up using less water running the dishwasher on two and a half gallons on our tanks than washing all of these dishes by hand because it fits a lot. Um, even though it's like a, considered a smaller dishwasher, um, it would take us a lot more to do these by hand. Yeah, I mean, when we're boondocking, if we don't feel like running this, we're not hooked up to electric and we don't want, when we were in Joshua Tree, we didn't want to bug people with our generator. Our next goal is solar, but we haven't gone there yet. We just did the, like we were on a river trip, took our bins outside and washed them that way. But I mean, we'd much rather use this if we have, a, if we have electric, we'd much rather use this. Um, we did go with an electric fridge. I don't necessarily have regrets about it, but it does make boondocking trickier. The electric propane fridges freak me out a tiny bit. I've just heard on like a rare occasion that they can light on fire and it backs right up to our boys' room. And when a tiny house goes up in flames, it's gonna go up in flames fast. So I don't want a fire to be in between me and my boys. We did go electric. When we boondock, we get these huge bricks of ice. We put one in the freezer and one in the fridge. They last about three days, and then we just have to go grab two more. And that's worked fine for us. It's not a big deal. Or if we're not like in a pretty place and we're just on a friend's property, we'll run the generator. We have one of the quieter like Honda generators, but it's still they're still a little loud and they bug people yeah. in national parks. We're thinking we're gonna get the big inverter that we need and then just start with like two batteries. So we'll at least just charge the fridge yep. and then we'll grow as we need to. As long as we have that inverter, we're good. I'm also a master gardener and I had a huge garden in Seattle. I knew I couldn't bring it with me so we at least were able to put in an herb garden up top which is amazing I've really had to I've killed a few things and I'm not used to killing things but like basil does not love growing up there but my mint is doing really well my lemon balm and then some thyme and some flowering plants so I've had to just come to terms with having a smaller garden I might end up just ripping that whole thing out and like putting in some things that will hold pots I think I might be able to grow basil if I get some pots so we might start over there we'll see um, but it does have like a really cool watering pan here and this waterproof backing that really helps that I'm not like dealing with any mold issues even though I'm growing plants in the house. And then one morning I woke up and decided that this wall was just too white and I headed to Home Depot and ended up with this beautiful art piece which I now sell on Etsy. Um, my Etsy is Tiny House Mama and I make smaller versions like two and three mountain ones. I even have a Grateful Dead shout out with like the sky was yellow and the sun was blue. So if you love the dead, that's for you. We've had some issues with our mini split. And now that we've been at this tiny house festival and we've actually gotten to chat with a ton of other tiny housers, I think there might be something wrong with our mini split. <laughs> it rattles the house and from the exterior unit. So the inside is awesome. The head is awesome. The exterior unit rattles. We've already had someone come out and put like a vibration sound thing on it to see if that would help, but it still is loud in the gooseneck, which is where our boys are. So we don't run it when they're sleeping, 
Luckily, we have a second heat source, so we have an electric fireplace, but we don't have a not electric heat source. So we're working on the mini split. I love having mini splits in our old, like, regular home. We had a heat pump, which is the same idea, just bigger. So we might just have to replace that and put in a different brand. I don't know what's going on there. I love the mini split idea. I love having heat and cooling. And I honestly, if my husband and I were sleeping in the gooseneck, it might not bother us as much. We just, you don't mess with sleeping babies. So <laughs> we want to sleep as long as possible. So onto our living room. We really wanted a space that like didn't feel like we were on wheels when we were hanging out as a family and like having a movie night. I really wanted an entertainment wall. I love like the reclaimed wood look. We had just renovated our home in Seattle before we then decided to go tiny all of a sudden and sold the house. And we did like a huge entertainment wall like this. So I just wanted to shrink it down and have a small one. Christmas, I can still have some stockings hanging for the boys and still make it feel like a fun occasion for them. We have internet. Amazingly, we got a Verizon grandfathered plan. So we actually have unlimited data with this little MiFi. We go through like 200 gigs a month and no issues. It's pretty amazing. I've got a guy, if you need a guy, we've got a hookup. We paid a grand. I have no idea where that grand went and I don't even care because we got internet and we only pay $30 a month. So our cell phone bill is like 210 a month. And so that extra 30 bucks, like once you've paid the grand and you spread it out over a year, it ends up being, you know, like a hundred bucks a month or something like that. It's really nothing to have internet every month. That's, that's right. what we were paying for internet at our house and we were paying our cell phone bill. Uh, we are going to have to do the same thing though, like every year. We're going to have to call, find the right person to chat with so that our, we can get, because we don't want to go month to month. The minute we go month to month, they're going to kick us off. So we need the contract. So we're going to keep like a month before we're about to get kicked off our contract, we're gonna call and try and find that one gal who will like set us up for another year. So that's the risk you take. You might only get it for a year and then you might have to start all over again. We'll see how that goes, we're only six months in. This fireplace is electric, it's awesome. We can do high heat, low heat, or no heat just for ambiance, which I love. And it just makes it feel really homey in here. We are thinking about getting a second uh, heat or another heat source that's not electric so that we can, right now we can't boondock if the weather's not good. So um, we'd really like to be able to boondock even if like the weather's bad. So we're thinking about getting one of those like little Dickinson boat pro propane things. We looked into wood stoves, but I just don't feel comfortable. Like the space is already small and the boys run like maniacs and I just don't want to deal with anyone getting burnt. So I think we'll put like a Dickinson on the wall and have another heat source. We really wanted a comfortable couch. Always see tiny houses with that bench seating. And we're pretty big people. I'm 5'10", my husband's 6'1". And so I just, I didn't think that that bench seating would be super cozy. I found Home Reserve, this company that I love. Um, I was able to, you buy it in pieces. So I bought three separate pieces with the arm that fit exactly in a 70.5 inch space. And I could have like, if it were a different size, I could have pieced together, you know, different pieces. I didn't want pillows like, falling in between that would have driven me crazy so it literally fits perfectly in the space we had to choose between couch or like couch that turns into a bed and storage we picked storage we've only had one person come and stay with us it was my husband's mom she's super tiny so she like fit really well on the couch if someone else comes we can blow something up and put it on the floor but we have like blankets in there and like games for games night and then the boys trains which they pull out and will like make a huge thing which we then are like tiptoeing over to get to our bathroom <laughs> so we have a huge bathroom for a tiny house um, but our boys are terrified of showers and we just didn't even want to put them through that so we have a full bathtub don't mind the laundry we've been in a tiny house festival for six days and all the towels really built up after i cleaned up but um we need to go to a laundromat <laughs> But yeah, we have a full bath, which is awesome. We have a ton more storage. We have two full cabinets. I really wanted the counter space and the cabinets over the stackable washer dryer. I go back and forth between regretting that decision. The washer dryer combo is, I think it would be awesome for like just a couple, um, but we struggle to get all the laundry done with four of us. So I end up at the laundry mat anyway, like every other week. It's, it's honestly not terrible though. It's like a little break for me from the boys. Dad gets some alone time with the boys and I get to write a blog and, um, and get all my laundry done in two hours. It doesn't, they don't do sheets and towels anyway. It takes a really long time to dry. Ours isn't vented. 
So I wonder if we got a vented one, if that would dry a lot faster. He's considered attempting to sell this one and trying a vented one, because I really don't want to rip this out and put in a stacker. I'd rather just go to the laundromat. I love my counters. So I'll go to the laundromat every two weeks and keep my counters. And it's a really small drum too. So you have to do like really small loads. I pull out a bunch just to like hang dry, especially for a nice weather. I'm totally cool with the sacrifice. The first builder we were gonna go with was like really pushing for a stackable. She said we were gonna hate it. You don't hate it. I mean, it's great if the boys have like an accident and I just need to like get something done quick so we don't have the pee smell. But I don't mind the laundromat, I really don't. It's not terrible. We can find a pretty decent one in every city. Obviously, I don't love that like we were pretty green family. I don't love that like there was Tide used in it right before us, but luckily we don't have super sensitive skin so we don't react to it. So it's it's been fine for us. So yeah, so I have a ton of storage. I'm not like a girly girl, but I do like my face wash. So like we fit a bunch of stuff in here. I didn't even have to get rid of my neti pot We have like, you know any meds if the boys get sick We don't have to like run out. I feel like we have like exactly what we need. I don't want for anything I don't want for more storage either. Um, we don't have anything that we don't need I do like living pretty minimally, but I also like having what I need on hand. So that's been really helpful We also have a compost toilet. We have the separate. I love that I don't have to carry my pee out I have heard some people like jerry-rigging the nature's head so that they can divert the urine. I'm not, I haven't, obviously haven't tried that because our separate just automatically diverts the urine to our gray tank. Um, we're still obviously dealing with poop. It's pretty funny, my husband really wants to make a video where he's like, he hates cleaning out the poop and I'm over here like getting in there like this is no big deal I know like it's only our poop. It's not a big deal since we travel full-time We take ours to like a porta potty place every month and a half and they'll empty it for 30 or 35 bucks Which is way less than our sewer bill every ever was so I don't mind They did oversell it a tiny bit only because it doesn't start composting in the bucket it's still poop when I'm cleaning it out a month and a half later. So it's not composting while it's in there, but you're like putting your toilet paper in there too to absorb any extra moisture. Um, so it's not just like a huge bag of poop. We have the lid, so we just put the lid on it and take the whole bucket every month and a half. It's really, really easy actually. And I didn't believe them that there was no smell. It's true, there's literally no smell. These things are amazing. The one thing I wanna tell people, so ours vents on the same place, on the same wall that our front door does. Do not vent yours on the same wall at your front door. If the wind's blowing just right and you have your windows or your door open, it'll come in through your door because the fan is so amazing. It's like pulling it all out, but it's pulling it out. So I think you can have two 90 degree elbows. So we are now going to have this elbow and then we'll probably get cut into the wall there and elbow it out the back. And hopefully that'll help a little bit. Um, it doesn't happen all the time. It's not like an all the time thing, but it's definitely like if we want to be hanging out in the front of our house, you don't want people smelling your poop. Um, so yeah, so that's, that's a, that's a good thing to think about. This is the most magical storage space ever. Like couples and individuals might not need this, but for a family of four, this is amazing. It's literally only like a one by two foot space, but we have two of these huge laundry baskets, which are full right now, because we've been at the festival. Two of these back here. So this is the boys, this is mine. Kevin is upstairs. <laughs> um, but then we fit all of our extra toilet paper, paper towels, the boys' daytime diapers, the boys' nighttime diapers, swim diapers, all of their extra wipes. Um, just right here, we fit all of our towels for showering, all of our tapestries, all of the boys' towels in this one, all of our like rag towels for cleaning, and all of our beach towels in the back. So this little teeny tiny one by two foot space is amazing. You have to think about like every square inch of your house because if you utilize it correctly, it'll work so well for you. This has been like the best thing ever and there's just no wasted space. It's beautiful. It's just like a, our sink, our bathroom sink is just a traditional pedestal sink. We're both really tall. So my husband's poor mother like had to stand on a step stool to wash, but I love that I can so easily like brush my teeth and wash my face. And then it didn't take up space underneath obviously, which is why we went above counter. Um, and then honestly, this never even gets used because um, we have these these two cabinets so we can just rip this out and put in a regular mirror at this point. I think that's what we're gonna end up doing. So it's just, again, less stuff. We're always trying to go more and more minimally. Um, and then we went with a slider door, which you always want if you can, because then there's not a door like swinging in your space and taking up more space. There's always like a little gap here. So you just, you just really wanna like love your family, you know, like they know you're pooping and it's all good. We've got a bathroom fan. So you wanna use the bathroom fan minimally because it can negate 
the separate. So you just, we only use it like when we're showering pretty much. You don't really need to use it when you're pooping because the separate fan is doing that for you. Um, so we just turn it on for like 15 minutes while we're showering and we're good to go. Um, we didn't want to deal with a ton of tile. We did do backsplash in the kitchen and it's a flex grout and we've had no issues. So we probably could have tiled our shower. We decided not to. The boys created a tidal wave. It's less grout to clean. So we just went with like regular like poly all one piece. I'm really glad we did it because it's so easy to clean. Though I think we could have gone with like fancy flexi grout and it would have been fine because we've driven over 3,000 miles at least and the flex grout in the kitchen is beautiful. No cracking, no nothing. So that stuff is pretty amazing. If you need to hang any instruments, they have these awesome things. I just, the only things I pull down when we travel are my guitar. I throw it on the bed. Um, my pins, pictures don't really, like glass doesn't really travel well, so I pull those down, and my two hanging plants. And that's all I really have to pull down when we travel. I put on the baby clips and lay the chairs down because those have fallen and pull in the stairs, and we're good to go with travel. It's really nice. We knew we didn't want stairs. Um, they just take up so much space. We still, we already had a ton of storage. We didn't need more storage. So, um, and I always wanted to be an aerial artist as a kid. So this like is fulfilling my life long childhood dream. I'm super glad that we didn't do it. I don't regret it at all. Obviously some people need stairs if you've got like a big dog that you want sleeping with you. Um, though if you don't want the dog sleeping with you, this helps. But, uh, or if you're, you know, older, but like if you're limber, do a ladder because it really opens up the space. I love how this open the space is and our boys can still play on the floor and have a ton of floor space. We went with the like flats, so there are no rungs. So it feels a little bit like a staircase rather than like the thin rungs and um, their handles. So it honestly feels really comfortable climbing up and down. I don't mind it at all. It's really lightweight, so it's super easy to move and I can move it over to the herb garden as well. And get my gardening done since we have a bar up there. So that is really nice. I think our loft, I think we went with 12 feet and there's two feet of storage in the back. And we have a king bed up here. Um, since we're tall, we decided to sacrifice space up here to have more space down below. So down below, there was just a guy in here who's six foot eight and he fit underneath our loft. Most lofts are like six two, six three. One of our twins is supposed to be six foot eight. We'll see if he makes it there, but we wanted to have the height there. So we sacrifice space up here because all you do is sleep. Um, and I can still like almost sit up. I can still lay back and read a book. If we need some alone time, I'll be up here reading a book. Kevin will be downstairs watching a show. His closet up here um, with all of his clothes. You know, some books, some hats. We got rid of a ton of books. I still really like to read books with paper. I struggle with the Kindles. Um, so we'll just like swap out with friends when we're in a new city so I can get some new books and um, still, you know, turn pages, which I really like. And then we just put bins at the end of the loft for Kevin's clothes as well. I'll show you my closet in a little bit. I went really big with my closet and then Kevin gets some bins in the closet up here. Um, we're just, we got creative with like hats and hung those up and it's really nice and it fits a full king up here. The skylight's awesome. It doesn't open all the way but uh, it opens to like 60 degrees. And we definitely sleep with it open every night, it's great. The other thing to think about with a tiny house is like, there's no hiding in a tiny house. So you really do want good window coverage because you never know when you're gonna be at an RV park or like somewhere where it's just a little sketchy. So we didn't spare money on like blinds. We went to select blinds. They're always having like a 50% off deal or something. These ones are by hand because we can obviously reach them. I'll show you. A uh, super cool trick on the ones that we can't reach. We got like mechanical, like with a little we just push of a button and they go down, push of a button, they go up. You just don't want to skimp there, especially if you're ever going to be parked at an RV park because they can just get a little bit weird. I can get weird. <laughs> One in four shoes has E. coli. Fun fact, which is so gross. And I hate shoes in my house and I didn't even want to look at them. I've seen a lot. I really researched like tiny house shoe storage because I've seen a bunch where they'll like put shelving up and you like slide your shoes in but I didn't want to look at them they're just messy so this was like our genius idea for shoe storage just flips up it fits even like way more than this but it's really easy even our boys like know to take their shoes off when they come in they just sit down throw them under we're good to go 
And then it's even one step up, which means less climbing up for them. That was why we didn't put them in the loft. We didn't, we didn't trust them on the ladder yet since they just turned three. I am like partially embarrassed to admit this and for you guys to see this, but um, I don't understand capsule wardrobes. I love bright colors and like fun stuff. So we have, I have a huge tiny house closet. Um, we have two four foot poles in here. Um, I kept calling it my shimmy closet rather than a walk-in closet. So I thought I could like shimmy in, shimmy out, pick out what I wanted. I, when we were designing, I was just like drawing all these designs, like 40 designs. And we picked like four that we really liked and we taped them out on our back deck and we walked through them a bunch. We'd leave them for a couple days and just see how we felt. And this was the, the floor plan that we liked the most and the one that we ended up obviously sticking with. But I must have been like leaning back since there wasn't a wall there. It was just tape thinking like, oh yeah, I'll be able to see everything. Obviously there's a wall here now. So the shimmy closet didn't work as well as I had hoped, but I can just sit on my step here and like kind of rifle through the bottom because I can't see the bottom when I shimmy in. We also put our electrical panel in there. So Kevin can't even get to it. So if we ever need to mess with our electrical panel, I have to climb in there and get to it. So we probably should have put that somewhere else, but you know, hindsight is 2020 and we have so few regrets with our layout that um, those are so minimal I don't even care. And it's still like a ton of amazing storage and I didn't have to get rid of any of my clothes. Barn door just to block it off and then again, just like this is one thing we really have to strap down. We didn't strap it down on our first drive and the whole door fell off. <laughs> yeah, so now we strap it on and it's been good ever since. <laughs> we use, I mean, I even like hang on this to get down from the gooseneck and it's no problem. We gave the boys like a ton of places to be able to climb up. Obviously we wanted as few accidents as possible. So we, yeah, we gave them as few pla as many places to, to get up here. We did put the coat rack here. It's not a big deal for us. We're all like narrow, so it's it's been fine. We named our house Destiny Unbound after a fish song and um, got that on Etsy and it's awesome. And it, it doesn't get in our way even in the winter. We've got like big coats on there. We just squeeze past. So, we did a gooseneck, like I said, for travel. So we did end up losing some space, if you think about it, because we could have had like a downstairs bedroom if we had a bumper pool and then a loft up top with like storage. I don't regret that at all though either because the gooseneck has been incredible. Like this thing toes so beautifully. We did steel frame as opposed to wood. Volstruck makes it. We did. We went with Volstruck, but Trailer Made also makes. You can get like a Trailer Made trailer and the trailer made steel frame all from them and they make a good product as well. So for like perspective, our friend has a 28 foot bumper pool. She did wood frame and her house weighs 22,000 dry. We are a 34 foot gooseneck and our house weighs 16,800 dry. It's like substantial, seriously substantial. So the steel frame is baller and we haven't had any issues like I said we've traveled with over 3,000 miles and it's like holding up really really well the boys room we wanted to have like a real room we weren't ready for them to not be in cribs yet so the gooseneck was their room it's perfect we fit two full-size cribs in here their nicknames are river wolf and Bodie bear so we found these really beautiful sconces that represent their names. It's my tattoo as well, River Wolf and Bodie Bear. And I just like, I love their room the most. It has so much character. I love it. And then we, since we're in the city right now, we popped over to Ikea. They have bunk beds that will fit perfectly in here. Either we can fit bunk bed going this way or going this way. So we should, the boys should be able to grow into this room pretty well. Um, they'll, they'll be, should be able to be in bunk beds for a while. So once they grow out of the cribs, we'll pick up the bunk bed. Um, fit that in here and they'll have even more floor space to play. Um, these are from Ikea. They hold all of the toys that we brought. The only things that they were really bummed about right before we decided to go tiny, we had been like shopping for one of those like fun, like uh, truck vehicles, you know, the little ones at Toys R Us that like the kids can drive. They were super bummed they didn't get one of those, but traveling there was no way. And then we had to get rid of their train table. So that was a big, big one to go. But after traveling for six months, they've been totally fine. We just make sure to travel with like STEM toys, which are toys that can be used in a ton of different ways. They're more like science-minded toys. They can build, you know, a spaceship or a car or anything. And that seems to work really, really well as far as toys go. So you just want toys that like have multi-purpose. And if one comes in, then one goes out, which is honestly like a really good 
theory to live by whether you're living tiny or not so you don't accumulate a ton of stuff. So there are only three, um, so we're not homeschooling, techni technically homeschooling yet, but we do plan on homeschooling. I have my master's in education. I used to be a kindergarten teacher. Um, and the minute we found out we were having boys, I knew that I wanted to unschool which or road school. So um, that's our plan for the boys. Uh, I am finding that other people's children listen to you a lot better than your own children do. <laughs> I mean, my kids were like, my students were, I had 27 kindergartners one year and like we had an amazing year and I, I thought I was gonna like rock this twin parenting thing. And man, they just, I'm tired at the end of every day. They really like throw you, but it's really rewarding and I, I do really hope that we can, we can unschool. They're really wild, active boys and I don't think they'll do well in a classroom setting. And I really wanna set them up for success. We also have some amazing storage in their room. We can fit a ton of books. They each have three bins for shorts and pants and shirts, shorts, pants, shirts, and then like their sock and lovey bin and their PJ bin. Um, we did get a teeny tiny storage unit in Portland, the smallest one we could get for all of our outdoor gear because we weren't about to get rid of that stuff. There was nowhere in the tiny house. So just like rock climbing and snowboarding and ski gear. And then I, since I was a kindergarten teacher, I've just got a lot of good children's books. So anytime we head up to Portland, we switch these out for a new set of children's books and then the boys have fresh books and, you know, and then they're not getting bored either. So that's been really helpful. And then we have their winter coats stashed over here, um, extra blankets, like this, this storage fits even more than I ever imagined it could have. It's pretty cool. It's perfect for them. Uh, so really quick back to the kitchen. I just wanted to talk about I feel like we took a little bit of a risk putting our entire kitchen on one side of the house. We were trying to do a ton of research before but we really couldn't find much on like you know it was saying how important it was front to back weight distribution but we couldn't find much on side to side so we didn't know how this thing was going to drive but we also really didn't want the galley kitchen because like I said I wanted like a big some kind of big open space. So we took the risk we put our kitchen all on one side with the upper cabinet so it's a ton of weight and this thing still tows really well. So I'm so happy that we made that decision. We didn't let fear hold us back and do the galley kitchen. The We have exactly 26% tongue weight on the goose neck and you're supposed to stick at 25 for a bump or for a goose neck and like I think it's 10 to 15 for a bumper pull um, and we're at exactly 26 and I was terrified to tow this thing for the first thousand miles. And my husband was finally like, you gotta try this alley, like just in case. So I did it and now like I call myself a towaholic and he never gets to tow. So it's really easy to tow. The weight side to side doesn't make an issue. The front to back weight really helps having that like 26% tongue. So take note, cause we couldn't find that information anywhere. So hopefully that helps somebody else. If you plan to boondock, um, go bigger than 35 gallon tanks, especially if you're bigger than two people. The 35 gallons, we really have to conserve. There's like no baths. We're really careful with dishwashing. I know I would like to have a tiny bit more water, um, so I probably should have gone 50. We make do and it's fine, but 50 would have been nice. I mean, 100 would be awesome. I know some buses are able to have 100, though I don't know where those go. Yeah, so 35 gallons is small. We make do, but it's small. So I would go bigger with the tanks and put as much on propane as you can. We literally spend 40 bucks on propane every two months and I take long showers. Our hot water heaters are on propane and like as much on propane as possible, except for obviously I talked about the fridge. And I wanted to show you my magical select blinds. Check this out. <laughs> the first night we got this, we did this like a hundred times. Up, down, up, down. <laughs> And I think we pay, we have like, my husband just kept going more windows, bigger windows. So we have, I think 13, 12 or 13 windows in this house. And it costs like 1500 for all of the blinds. And I'm glad we have privacy because it helps, like I said, at the RV parks. So you can follow us on Instagram at Tiny House Twin Travels. We document a ton about tiny living, tiny living as a family and traveling with kids. So that's a really good place to find us. We also have a blog, www.tinyhousetwintravels.com. And same thing, just like longer versions of just traveling with a family and what it's like living this lifestyle as a family. And then I also make those art pieces up on the wall, the mountain pieces. And I am on Etsy at Tiny House Mama. That's my shop name. So come and find us. And uh, all of that information will be down below.